Good morning and welcome. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's been three years since this uh, symposium has happened. Uh, we didn't have the symposium 2019. It is really great to be back together again. Um, and I welcome all the families and friends and participants today and send a warm welcome from the Department of Surgery and also from the UCLA Aggie Hirschberg Center for Pancreatic Diseases. The lineup's really terrific today. You can see we have wonderful speakers. There'll be lots of time for discussion um, and it'll be a great time to get together over lunch, you know, create new connections. We're really here to provide information for the patients and their families and we hope we're uh, able to provide that for you today. I have the great pleasure of introducing the first speaker this morning. Uh, and uh, our sp first speaker is Dr. Mark Gerges. Uh, Dr. Gerges is an assistant professor of surgery at UCLA. He uh, also has an appointment at the VA, West LA VA, just a few miles away from here. He has interest in robotic and minimally invasive surgery, and he trained with us here at UCLA in general surgery, and then did his fellowship in surgical oncology at University of Pittsburgh. Um, he is an expert clinician, and he's also a scientist. He has a, a interest and expertise in the use of peptides and radio ligands, not only for therapeutics, but also for diagnostics. Uh, he's going to give us an update on what's been going on over the last three years. Dr. Kyrgios. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Well, thank you, Aggie, for allowing me to be here today. Thank you, Dr. Hines, for that introduction. Very nice. And thank you to all of you for uh, coming today and uh, listening, to us, listening to us for a little while. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about pancreas cancer, and then I'm going to go, you know, typically uh, in the scientific community, when we do these uh, progress reports, we kind of highlight some of the ongoing uh, science and uh, clinical updates uh, that are going on. So I'm going to try to do that for you all today uh, to distill it to something that's very simple and, and, and really uh, show you that this is really a, a message of hope um, about where, where we are and where, where we're going to go. <clears throat> so, so this is where we're starting from and how bad pancreas cancer is. Um, you know, survival rate is low, and this is things that we all know, uh, but I'll reiterate just to set the stage, you know, the survival is low, most patients are metastatic at diagnosis, um, you know, the survival hasn't really changed a whole lot in, in many years now. Um, pancreas cancer only receives 2% of funding, federal funding, um, it, it's, it's already, the, it's the third and, and, some, and in males, the second leading cause of cancer-related death. Um, and, and nearly half of all physicians are not even aware of the clinical trial options or the advances that are going on in pancreas cancer. This, this sets the stage for a lot of progress. And now in 2022, you know, um, the number of patients with pancreas cancer is increasing. It's about 62,000 plus, and the number of deaths are 50,000. You know, this is the only malignancy out there where the incidence every year is approximately the number of people that are dying. It makes it the most lethal cancer, and that's why we need to move forward, um, it, it, you know, in, in, in learning about it and discovering new therapeutics for it. So this is a little bit of an overview of um, pancre pancreatic cancer, what treatments are available. Um, you know, well, I'll start on the, on the farthest right, which is the advanced disease, which is where most people present uh, metastatic disease or, or what we call locally advanced when the blood vessels are involved. And this is the majority of patients, 80 to 85 percent. And as you can see at the bottom, the, the survival down there, you know, not, not so great. And then when we move towards more localized, we do better. We do better. And so this, for me, sets the stage for a couple of things. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Let me talk about this real fast. One, I wanted to encourage you all that this is a list. I know you can't read it. This is a list of a selected list of clinical trials going on for pancreas cancer. A lot of stuff going on for pancreas cancer. Selected trials that are active and selective targets and novel things that we're doing in the laboratory for pancreas cancer. This is not to be read, but just to encourage you that a lot of thing, a lot of a lot is happening right now for pancreas cancer. And so 
we want to move we want to move the needle and to move the needle there are these three things and I'm going to talk about each one of them individually we want to improve the therapies for the people in the metastatic disease that's the 85 percent of patients we want to try to shift those patients from the metastatic uh, you know, disease, we want to shift them to earlier disease, or discover them at least earlier, and then we want to continue to advance for those patients who are localized. And so this is, I, I'm not trying to steal one of our guest speakers' thunder, um, he'll talk about this a little bit more, but the tumor microbiome, this is, uh, this is where a lot of investigation is going on, um, you know, th these investigators, <coughs> excuse me, these investigators showed that patients who live longer have this high microbial diversity in the tumor and can actually modify, <clears throat> can modify the microbial diversity in the tumor with their gut microbial diversity, with antibiotics or other things. And this leads to improved survival. And this is, this is coming to fruition uh, where in, you know, <clears throat> wherein there will be clinical trials going on soon using antimicrobial therapies just by themselves uh, for improving survival in pancreas cancer patients. This comes from one of our own here at UCLA, Dr. Donahue, and learning about the molecular mechanisms underlying pancreas cancer and their lethalities or synthetic lethalities that they can, that we can harness and make cells vulnerable to therapies. In this case, Dr. Donahue and his group learned, learned that this molecule, type 1 interferons, impact a number of different things, specifically this ATR, which normally helps cancer cells survive. But if they inhibit this, they can induce DNA damage and pancreatic cancer cell death. And so from this trial we learned, or from this study we learned, that a subset of pancreas cancers have this enriched uh, molecule, cytokine, called interferon, and that, applicates, that activates this response. And when you inhibit this response, you get lethal DNA damage, and this limits tumor growth. This is also going to translate soon into clinical trial. As you all know, I'm sure, KRAS, KRAS is mutated in almost all of our pancreas cancer patients. <clears throat> it's usually this G12D mutation, but there's a subset of G12C, and more, more recently, there is a major publication, and this is actually already in clinical trial, with this new inhibitor to the, G, the KRAS G12C mutant, which is very novel, very new, <clears throat> discovered, tested in lung cancer, but will be tested and is being tested in pancreas cancer as well. And this is very novel because this is the first time KRAS has been druggable and targetable. And this is just going to lead, you can see already that in the next, you know, five or ten years, we're going to get additional agents that target KRAS and more therapies that will go into clinical trials, specifically for pancreas cancer. So now how do we shift patients from the advanced setting to the earlier settings? And this is data from our other speakers today, uh, one of our other speakers today, Dr. Canto, uh, Dr. Go is on this, uh, <clears throat> this uh, summative review here, and using artificial intelligence for the early detection of pancreas cancer. It's very interesting stuff. The idea is to identify a high-risk population and then do surveillance on them with imaging, in this case, CT scan, and after, and with CT scan, using AI to to, de to, to um, uh, determine uh, changes in the pancreas that may suggest the development of pancreas cancer. They've already done this retrospectively to show that AI is better than the human eye in reading these CT scans for this particular thing. <clears throat> this is very hopeful, that the changes in imaging can occur up to 12 months prior to the diagnosis of pa pancreas cancer that we diagnose currently, and that 12-month, um, you know, lag time, 
or lead time bias, as it's called, is really important and can help change whether a patient is metastatic versus an earlier localized disease where we can actually do something about it. This also uh, received a press release recently, um, <clears throat> and this is um, also along the lines of screening and moving the needle away from met metastatic patients to early disease. This comes out of um, some of our collaborators at UCSD using a blood test and a platform that they developed in uh, diagnosing or correctly diagnosing, I should say, early stage pancreatic cancer patients. As you can see, they tried it for a different, uh, three, three different cancers, pancreas, ovarian, and bladder cancer. Pancreas performed the best with a high sensitivity in early stage diseases, meaning we detect it very, very frequently and rare, rarely miss people. So the takeaway from this is that this platform shows promise and that there are gonna be more studies that are gonna occur. They're, ran, they're, um, they're enrolling trials enrolling patients right now to study this in more depth for more population-based <clears throat> or population-level screening. Dr. Hines mentioned, <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit about myself, just a little bit. Dr. Hines mentioned that I do a little bit of work in um, radio ligands and peptides for imaging and therapy. This is some of the work that came out of UCLA and uh, the nuclear medicine division um, in collaboration with myself and, uh, and others where uh, we took uh, a, number, a number of different patients, including pancreas patients. We injected a compound for a PET scan, a new compound for a PET scan. <clears throat> we did the PET scan, which is this image here. We took out their tumor, and we looked at the correlation between the PET scan and the tumor in expression of this molecule, FAP. And we found, this is, this is one of the patients from that trial, we found that there's a high correlation. This is the pancreas cancer here and here, you can see, and this is the um, immunohistochemistry, as it's called. This is when you look under the microscope, um, the preponderance of this molecule FAP in the tumor, showing the correlation between the imaging and what's actually happening at the tumor. The takeaway here is that this new molecule is, while investigational and ongoing clinical trials are happening at UCLA with this, a phase two trial currently, uh, may improve our diagnostic accuracy <clears throat> and uncover disease that is not visualized on conventional imaging. And now we want to talk about advancing care in those localized disease patients. This was the biggest trial that occurred in, I think, 2018 or 19. The change from using a single agent chemotherapy after pancreas cancer surgery to multi-agent fulfurinox. This is huge because now patients have an average survival of four and a half years, and this is the longest we've seen in decades. Oh, thank you. Finally, I apologize that didn't come out very well, but this is one of my other interests, which is robotic pancreas surgery, and in specifically for cancer. And we were able to show, I mean, you can't see the data, so I could just be lying, but we were able to show <laughs> that, <clears throat> that patients did well, their perioperative outcomes were improved, and they almost actually had an improved survival because their perioperative outcomes were improved with the robotic approach. This was just published in 2021. <clears throat> and so I do a lot of robotic pancreas cancer surgery. Um, I do think it's helpful. Um, I think there's certainly a role for standard open surgery. The point being that there are multiple different approaches and we're continuing to advance the technology for our patients. And so my final thoughts here, just as uh, the time wraps up, I think, is that there are tremendous efforts now being undertaken to move the needle. This is, I just highlighted a few things that um, I hope that I find very interesting, I hope you find very interesting, that are going to move the needle, that are in trial right now, and, and that this is a message of hope, and we will continue to make progress. And with the help of Aggie Hirschberg and her foundation and others like it that can support our research efforts and support us in what we do, we will then be able to support you. I want to thank you.
Any, any questions? Thank you. We're going to have a, a question and answer. You're welcome to come up to the, to the sides. Hold on, I'm going to come to you then, because we want everybody to hear. Could you re-show the first slide that shows the uh, lifetime outcome per stages, please? Uh, I think. OK, Dr. Gerdes, we have a question here. Yes. Uh, the question is, how, how can we increase our gut microbial diversity to reduce pancreatic cancer? I am not going to steal Dr. Dudeja's thunder. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. He's going to talk about that, I think, in depth. Uh, but there are multiple ways. That <laughs> some of them you don't want to hear about, some of them you do. Uh, there are different antibiotics. There are different, um, <clears throat> there are different oral medications that can be taken. And there are other things called fecal transplantation that can do it. Um, I think he's going to talk in depth about those things. Right, so I'll let great. him do that. Hi. Uh, my question, you talked about high-risk individuals. Who are those high-risk individuals? Yeah. I know so many healthy yeah. people who've come down with pancreatic cancer. So how can we find those people? I, I think it's wonderful that the questions are about exactly what our guest speakers are going to talk about today. <laughs> exactly. So I think that's great. I've then I've clearly wet your appetite. So I've done my job. I'm actually going to let Dr. Kanto <laughs> talk about that too. She'll talk about it. I promise. You'll get your answer. Did I hear you right that you could still sign up for this blood test study? Uh, yeah, at UCSD, I think they're doing it at UCSD. U U yeah, UCSD. San Diego, UC San Diego. Oh, yeah, sorry. Do that? I do not. Do you know how to sign up for it? Uh, you know, <laughs> I know. Maybe Amy can get that information. We can try to help you with that. Yeah. I know the investigator, so we can put you in touch with those people, but um, I don't specifically know. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I don't have the slide that I should have probably put up here, and it really is um, a, a matter of expertise and a matter of um, the location. Um, this is actually a reasonable slide to look at. There's the, there are these patients here that are called borderline resectable and locally advanced. They're basically named that way because of their association with the blood vessels. That's when it becomes more dangerous to do the robotic uh, procedures and usually the standard approach is necessary. Um, so in those cases, it's a kind of uh, a, an, an expert opinion, um, but Otherwise, in the uh, earlier stage, the more localized and resectable, uh, it, it's really no different robotic or open either way. We, we have a question from yeah. our Zoom panelists. Yeah. Dr. Gerges, we have a question. Are there clinical trials for those with sizable pancreatic cysts but no cancer detected? Yeah, um, good question. I don't know exactly um, of those trials, um, they are investigating uh, different things like cyst fluid analysis. Um, I honestly don't know. I can't, I can't speak exactly to that. My apologies. We're going to look into that a little bit further. We may have an answer over here, though. Thank you so much for this, this message of hope, that just a fantastic talk and fantastic research. Can you tell us what, what it means by better peri perioperative outcomes yeah. with, the, uh, with the robotic? Sure, yeah, definitely. That's a lot of what I do, and what it really comes down to is mitigating complications and reducing complications, which we can. Uh, we have decreased wound infection rates, decreased blood transfusions. Blood transfusions are associated theoretically you know, in number of number of studies with worse outcomes, worse long-term cancer outcomes. So decreased blood loss, decreased transfusions, decreased infectious complications. Those are the main ones. And improved um, uh, length of hospitalization. So patients go home uh, about two days earlier on average. Um, and in those ways, patients recover uh, faster, um, more reliably um, in that data set patients were getting chemotherapy because they had less complications, um, which as we all know, pancreas cancer and chemotherapy kind of go hand in hand. Uh, so all these things together, I think, have, have marginally helped us uh, with the robotic approach. Is, is that also true with regards to the quality of life? 
That's a great question, and it hasn't been studied yet, and it's really a great question, really. Patient-related outcomes is what you're, I think, getting at. Patient-related outcomes, you know, uh, emotional, mental um, um, markers um, of improvement with whatever, and, and that just hasn't been studied yet. Dr. Gurgis, we have another one on Zoom. And if I could just remind everybody, just because people at home can't hear if you're asking the question from the audience to either come to the mic or wave me down so that everybody at home can hear. Um, Alyssa, what's that question? Trisha is asking, does UCLA have a cannabis or CBD clinical trial going on right now? That's a good, we have a very well-developed uh, Eastern medicine group at UCLA. I do not know if we have a trial. I don't think we have a trial going on specifically, um, but the, the group at UCLA is very well-developed. Um, you know, I think actually the last in-person Hirschberg symposium we had, we had a talk on that specifically. Um, so it's... I, I, it's um, what am I trying to say? It's it's very uh, um, it's a great of great interest at UCLA, and I think there's a lot of resources for it at UCLA. I don't think there's a clinical trial. Uh, can you speak a little bit more to the early stage blood detection uh, test and how it might be different from the blood based biopsy? Yeah. Yeah, so the researchers, um, they haven't disclosed their whole platform as to what it is, but they actually integrate not only, <clears throat> so they, they draw the blood, um, they have their platform of how they um, uh, centrifuge the blood and separate out the different components of the blood. They do standard testing on it uh, with age and other things like CA-99, which is a standard blood marker that we use. Um, and they actually integrate this like, you know, 10 or 12 um, data point panel and made an algorithm uh, to determine, you know, your risk of having or being able to detect pancreas cancer, which is also proprietary to them. So I can't speak specifically all about it, but it's not actually just a one, like, blood test. They actually integrate a whole number of data points to determine um, what they think your risk is. Okay, I think that's, that's it. Thank you so much, Dr. Gurgis. <laughs>